Hello friends and welcome back. So in, in this video I'm calling this Changing Bag Essentials. If you want to develop a film at home, and I highly recommend it, it is a load of fun. And it's, it's quick, you have a quick turnaround, okay? Uh, instead of sending film off to the lab, you have to worry, you know, they, they, as I said in a different video, your negatives are going to come back dusty, they're going to come back scratched, and you, there's, you run the chance of getting it x-rayed en route to the lab and you're going to ruin it. It'll fog the film and your film is going to come back ruined, okay? So I highly recommend you developing your own film at home, whether it's E6, uh, C41, or black and white. It's just a barrel of fun. So, so here's what you need, the, the essentials, okay? So I have my changing bag, okay? This is just basically a dark bag, so it's light proof, right? You, so let me show you what goes in it. So for 35 millimeter, you have your scissors, you have it's called a church key can opener, you have a church key can opener. You have your, I've already, actually I'm reshooting this, this is my second take, so I've already opened the film. But you have your actual 35mm cassette of film, you have your two reels on the spindle, right? So I have my spindle, and I have, you have your two reels. Um, you have your, the funnel portion of the tank and then the tank itself. The two, the two components that don't need to go in the changing bag are the lid, the actual lid for the tank, and the agitation stick. Those two do not need to go in there. But everything else goes in. So what you do is you literally put everything in your bag. Okay, I'm just, for, for right now, I'm just going to put everything in here. And you take these off too, right? Take these off. Everything goes in your bag. Everything goes in the bag. Being a little haphazard, of course, but you know, you get it. So you zip the bag, zip the bag up. There's two little pieces of Velcro here, and you use some like clothes pins, or I use stainless steel clips here that I use for drying, and I actually uh, clip them just just to you know for extra light uh, light uh, blocking the light. Okay, and then what I also do is I I, I turn off all the lights in the, in the, my apartment because I don't want any ambient leak. So when you're so what you do is you put your arms in, right? You put your arms in the bag, and then you're working in complete darkness, okay? So everything you do is like this. You're in the bag, and you're feeling around, and what I'm about to show you in the next video, so everything that I show you is going to occur inside the changing bag, okay? But obviously I can't show you for demonstration purposes. I have to show you how to do it outside of the bag. But just please keep in mind that everything that I'm doing in the next video is occurring inside of the bag in complete darkness, okay? That's very, very important to remember, okay? And uh, so that's about it for now. Again, you, you, put, you just put everything in there, right? And then you put your arms in and then you start working, right? You just want to make sure that you're, you know, I have a shirt on right now. Normally I'm just in a t-shirt and, and it would come up a little bit higher on my arm just for added, added uh, protection. And the only thing you won't need for 120, everything is pretty much the same for 120 except for uh, the can opener. You don't need the can opener for 120. All you need is the scissors. So you need kind of need the can opener for 35 millimeter, but you don't need it for 120. Other than that, so I'll get into, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video now, this, this portion, and then in the next one, we'll actually examine what occurs inside the bag. Okay. Okay, friends, so welcome back. So please, again, keep in mind that what I'm about to show you occurs inside the bag in complete darkness, okay? So I just want to reiterate that. Once you expose the film to light, you're going to ruin the film, so it has to stay. Everything here it occurs inside the bag, okay? So let me show you what you do. So this is actually it's pretty easy. So you'll see you have you do have two ends here, right? You have a, an end with the projection and then a, f a, flat, a flat end, okay? So what you do is you take your church key opener and you obviously use this side, right? The, the, you know, not the, right, the, you use the flat side. So you don't want to try to attempt it on this side because this will obscure, right? This is, it'll get in the way. You can't, you won't be able to do it. So you start with the flat side, okay? So what you do is you take your, your uh, church key here and you just open it like you would. Now, sometimes you have to fool around with it right, to get it to, to cooperate, but you do it a little bit at a time around the edge, okay, don't try to do it all in one spot or you're going to get this banana type thing, and again, you just want to try to get it off as flat as possible, so you'll see uh, different techniques, so th this is, it's up to you, some people spread it apart, some people really try to get crazy with it, and it's really not necessary, all you got to do is just open it a little bit 
and literally turn turn the film upside down. That's all you need to do. Okay, so this is like a hull. It's not necessary anymore. So at this point, now you'll see here that this, I'll show you. Again, I can touch this because it's it's ruined now. That this All this film is ruined because it's exposed to light. But this expired in 1992 or so because I'm not worried about it. So you can see here how it's still tightly coiled. It, you'll see expired film. Expired film loses its res, it, it loses its resiliency, resilience, and its uh, springiness. Right. So it'll stay coiled onto the onto this roll. Fresh film. When when you take fresh film out, it'll it'll just boom. It'll expand. It becomes very voluminous, right? Because it's fresh and it's it's springy and it's got a lot of uh, life in it, right? So this is very brittle and old. And that's why I really don't care. And it, plus, it doesn't develop well. But I, I don't mean to go off on too much of a tangent. But I'm just saying, when you open a fresh roll, it's gonna, it's gonna really pop on you. And that's how you can tell it's fresh. Okay. So what you do is, you're, again, you're inside the bag in complete darkness. You try to use your fingers as a guide. Okay. So you, 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 you know, you let a little bit out like this, just a little bit, because you're gonna have quite a bit, right? When you, when you start, this is the lead. When you first open a camera back, this is what you, you know, you, how you start to film. So about the first so much is gonna be exposed to, to light anyway, right? You have two or three frame, frames that are gonna be solid black. And when you see the solid black portion, that's how you know it's the lead, because it was exposed to light when you first started putting it on the spool. Okay, so you try to, you're in the bag again, I got to keep reiterating it, and you, you use your fingers, you're not going to be able to see, so use your fingers as a guide is to square off on the film, okay? And then you just take a little snip like this, and then that's how you start your film. So when I'm in the bag too, I also, I'm very careful just to hold the film by the edges. I don't try to, like, you know, gorilla grip this film and hold it by the exposed portion. I'm always trying to hold it by the, the, uh, the edges okay but again the part that's been exposed that's going to be black it's okay because it's there's no there's no uh, negative on there right you didn't make an imprint or take an image so the leader part it's okay to to hold so here's now this is really important and see I, I was not never able to find this when I was trying to initially research this this is how you're gonna feel in the bag you're gonna feel this leading section here so, right so this is this is how the, the reels work you're gonna this is where it loads now there's another part on here where it can trick you. You're gonna feel this, and and one time I <laughs> it was funny when I first started, I spent 30 minutes trying to load Tri-X, and I was trying to load it here. I was in the wrong spot. Yes, 30 minutes. And so what I found out is the way the way you determine if you're in the right spot is you feel for this. So you're gonna feel for the loading part, and then you go back a little bit further, and you're feeling for this. This is like a little ball. And it's like a little gripper. That's how it grips the film, okay? So you feel the loading part, and then come back a little bit, and you're feeling for this. That's how you know you're in the right spot. If you're in the wrong spot, if you're feeling this, see when you come back, it's still flat. That's how you know you're in the wrong spot. So just, you're looking for this part right here, and then feel back, and then you know you're good, okay? So here's how you do it. It's very easy, actually. So you take your film, right, and you're holding it like this, and you just, you just start it. You just... You, you just you load it onto the onto the reel and then you, you pull it you pull it a little bit until you get it underneath these the, the, the holders right the grippers okay and then so we know we're good there so it, here's how I do it I put my thumbs back here and I keep my, my my forefingers on this because I never want the film to jump off if you don't keep your fingers here the film can jump on you and you don't want that to happen okay so what I do is I keep my forefingers here, then you start your racket, ratcheting action, okay? The right, this portion, in, inside the bag, the right portion, you turn. And then at the same time, you put a little pressure here with your finger and turn back, right? And you're, what you're doing is you're loading it onto the reel. And if you're just very gentle, your fingerprint, especially if you have clean hands, it's, you're not gonna put a fingerprint on the film. So don't sweat that, okay? You might be worried, oh, I can't touch the film, I'm gonna put my fingerprint on. That's not true, as long as you put a very light pressure on it, and that's all you need, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep loading the film onto the, onto the reel. And I'll show you some secrets or show you some tricks as we go along here. So let me, let me just get this on. Let me finish this. So you can see I'm just ratcheting it onto the reel. Right? It's continuing to load. And sometimes you want to just take this and, and pull it back a little bit so it doesn't get in the way. And what I do is I try. You can see how, where my thumbs are. I try to keep the roll actually under my thumbs like this so it doesn't get tangled. And if you can do that, it's very beneficial. But again, this is expired film and it's not wanting to cooperate. Okay. 
Okay, so when you get, see this, what I'm, what I'm talking about, it's getting to the point where it wants to jump off the track, and that's what you have to try to be careful about. So when you get to the end, you can feel this tape. Now, Kodak, Kodak Films have this tape. Other ones, other makers don't have this tape, but it, it doesn't matter. So when you get to the end, all I'm saying is, you, is you, you feel you're inside the bag, and you feel for that, and get your fingers out of the way, and then you snip. You snip and get that out of the way, and then you finish loading this. So that's, it's finished now. So that's a finished... That's a finished product, okay? It's all loaded and ready to go. You take your spindle and you put the film reel onto the spindle, okay? So now, if you're doing one reel, just make sure because of gravity, obviously, because of the de development, the C41 or the black and white chemicals or whatever you're using, if you're only going to do one roll, the one roll has to go at the bottom. If you're doing two, it doesn't matter. If you have another, another set of film on here, you're good. But if you're only doing one, don't, don't reverse it to where the, right, you want it on the bottom so that gravity right you always know that you're, you're going to have uh, development chemicals on your on your film so then you take your tank you take your tank so it's on the spindle right i have the reels on the spindle and you put it inside the tank and this is then you put your your lid in now this isn't the lid but it's like the funnel this funnel thing right and you're listening for a click so listen you hear that's what you're listening for that click if you hear that click you're good to go Okay, let's try it again. So you put it in there, and you're turning it clockwise until you hear the click. That's good. Now it's it's light tight. Your your development tank is now light tight, and you can take it out of the changing bag. At this point, your film is protected. As long as you hear that click, that that when you turn clockwise, you hear that click. That means it means your film is now light tight in there. You don't have to put the lid on, of course, because you won't be able to put the chemicals in there. So you know you're good to go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to take a, a loading reel and change it from 35 to 120 medium format, okay? So you can see here these, these starting points are both aligned, right? And we, I showed you how to load, right? You're ratcheting the film on onto the reel. But you, what you do is you, you keep going. So what you do is, okay, so grip this. So you can see here's where the little ball is. So you want to take the right side and turn it clockwise, okay? So we, we have the reel. And just keep turning. You're not going to break it, okay? And then you expand it out. And then you turn it back counterclockwise. Until you hear the click. Okay, it's just that easy. So we can see here, you can see the difference. This would be, I'm trying to get my focus here, bear with me. Okay, there's my focus. So there's 120, 120 medium format, and there's your 35 millimeter. Okay, and the way, you, and you just re reverse the process, okay? So you, again, to get it back to a 35 configuration, you turn clockwise, push in, turn counterclockwise until it snaps, and there you go. You're back to your 35, okay? So you're back to another, you're back to your 35 millimeter roll, okay? Okay, okay, friends, I'm back. So instead of trying to roll in some fancy titles and stuff, I just made these on an index card. Okay, so here, so here's what I'm talking about. In the level of difficulty in your films inside the changing bag, 12 exposures is your friend, and the 35 millimeter, 12 exposures, the the length of film is about two feet. When you take it out of the canister, it's about two feet, and it's very easy to roll onto the the reel. Next is 24 exposure. It's about three and a half feet long, and these are both very easy. Okay, now this is not easy. So the 36 exposure uh, uh, roll is five feet long and it really starts to bind on the reel. And I'll show you how to do that. Let me take this back out of the, the developing, developing tank and I'll show you how to do it. So what you do, and, and, and again, I had to learn this through trial and error, okay? So what happens is when you're working with the film, Okay, in 12 and 24, you can always long stroke it. Okay, you have, remember I told you you have your fingers here and you're, 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 you're loading it onto the reel. Okay, you can use the full stroke. When you get to a 36 exposure uh, uh, film cassette, it'll start to bind. Your film is going to bind very badly in the reel. So what you do, instead of giving it full strokes, what happens is you just short stroke it. So you load the film with half strokes. Okay, you, you just keep doing this. Not, don't use the full stroke or you're going to bind the film. The film is going to bind in here. Okay, so for 12 and 24, you can do this all day. You can use the full stroke. But for the 36 roll, just half stroke it. Half stroke, half stroke, half stroke, half stroke. And then all th the whole roll will go on. You know, it, 
you know, it's still in the level of difficulty, it's very difficult, okay? So I just wanted to show you that little trick for the 36 exposure. You want to short stroke the film onto the reel, okay? Because again, if you measure it, that's five feet of film. That's a lot of film to get onto this roll and it's gonna, this reel, and it's gonna want to bind on you, okay? Okay, so let's go on. Okay, so fresh film. Don't start. So if you're a noob, here's what I'm recommending. If you're a straight up noob and this is your first time developing film at home, start with either 12 or 24 rolls and fresh because that's your greatest recipe for success, okay? Because fresh film is flyable, pliable rather, and it's easy to work with, okay? Fresh film will go on to the reel very easy. Expired film, it's brittle. So as I said before, when you take out, when you first take out, expired film it's going to stay very tight onto the reel okay because it's old and it's lost all its pliability and it's going to want to stay coiled and consequently it doesn't go on the reel well when you when you take out fresh film it'll just it'll go like this it'll go poof it'll just puff up and it right and it aids you fresh film aids you it's so easy to get started onto the reel okay because it's voluminous and it'll work with you it'll work with you going onto the reel okay so again if you, if, if you have your choice between, well, you do have your choice, obviously, but use fresh film, 12 and 24. It, it, stay away from the 36 at first. And here's why, too, because your pro films, your pro films are 36, right? Your, your portrait and your ectar. If you're new at this, you don't want to ruin professional film, right? I mean, first experiment with your drugstore film. So use your 12s and 24s. To, to learn the process and then later when you get good you can move to your ectars and portraits and such your triaxes at your 36 exposures okay so again this is this is training wheels and the fresh is training wheels wait until your experience until you start trying 36 or expired film and 120 120 is really it's not really easy and it's not difficult I would say on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, 120 would be like a number 5 and and level of difficulty 36 expired if you had a roll of 36 exposures and an expired that would be a 10 out of 10 in level of difficulty if you have fresh and 12 exposures that would be a 2 right and this would be probably be like a 4 not even that like a 3 but 36 and expired is a fatal combination I mean it's really really difficult to get onto the reel okay so I think I've covered just about everything I showed you how to get the, the film on if you have any questions please by all means just post your questions in the comment section and I will happily uh, answer your questions thank you